Hello, my name is Bonnie Potter. I'm the co-lay leader of the East Winds District. And as such, I serve on the District Committee on Ordained Ministry and the leadership team. I attend the Clio Area Church, Thedford Center, which is a two-point charge with Genesee UMC. Now, I've been asked to share some of my thoughts. Well, actually, maybe I volunteered to share my thoughts with people who are in their first few years of pastoral ministry. This from a layperson's perspective. Would you join me in a short word of prayer to invite God into our midst? Gracious and loving God, thank you for the opportunity to spend time with people who are beginning their pastoral ministry. I ask that you bless the sharing of my experiences and help it to strengthen the work of the church. Help it to encourage, build, and support your servants. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, to begin with, I'd like to tell you a bit about my background. I was raised in and became a member of the McBain Christian Reformed Church, where I attended two worship services every Sunday, catechism, Sunday school, girls' society, young people's society. My early social life was entirely centered around the church. Now, although I attended a public school, the superintendent of our school was an elder in the church that I attended. So from this very protected, small-town upbringing, I moved on to attend Ferris State College. And wow, my eyes were open to many things I was totally unaware of before. I attended from 1967 through 71, and if you'll recall, that was a time of great unrest in our country. Many things were going on. The Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War, anti-war movement, women's rights movements, to just name a few. Now, one night, I drove my parents' car to campus, and during a race riot, the car's windshield was smashed, and the top of the car was all dented in. Now, we women had hours at that time. We had to be in our dorm at 11 o'clock on weeknights and 1 o'clock on weekends. So I was in the dorm many evenings during much of the nighttime unrest, and I experienced the race riots along with my two African-American sweetmates. After graduating, I taught high school business and English classes at Montrose for six years. Then I was fortunate to be able to stay home with our daughter and son for seven years, after which time I taught at Swartz Creek High School for 20 years. I retired from full time and then continued one day a week to work with students at the Alternative High School for 13 more years. Now I'm retired from any paid position. And I am so blessed to be able to be serving my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as a layperson. I joined the United Methodist Church shortly after my husband and I were married and have served at our local church as Sunday school teacher, vacation Bible school coordinator, Bible study leader, worship lay leader, SPRC chair, UMW secretary at the local church. I formerly served as Crossroads District Director of Lay Speaking Ministries and the Crossroads Lay Leader. Now, I tell you all this to say I'm old. <laughs> well, yes, that's true. But I also have had lots of experience and hopefully have gained some wisdom. I'd like to share some thoughts that I have learned by experience looking at this from a lay person's perspective. In the churches you are called to serve, you will find people in all walks of life, skilled workers, professionals, retired, employed, unemployed, people of all ages, although I know many of our churches have older congregations. You will experience quite the variety. Some who have very recently become a Christian, others who have been a Christian all their lives. Some who have deep spiritual disciplines, well-versed in the Bible and steeped in prayer. Others who have not developed spiritual disciplines. Some who are young and vibrant, strong physically. Others who are older and are more restricted as to physical activities. Some who are highly educated, others who have minimal formal education. Some who are traditional families 
others who choose a different lifestyle, some who are economically well off, others who are struggling financially. Some are Democrats, some Republicans, some independents. Some have different cultural backgrounds. To top it all off, you'll find a whole range in between of each of these categories. You will have as your parishioners such a diverse group of people with so many different gifts and graces. Every person is unique. Now my suggestion to you is get to know the people in your congregation the people that God has called you to serve. Find out about their lives, their family, their children, grandchildren. Learn what they did to earn a living. Find out their struggles, their strengths. Now, it took me about three minutes to tell you about myself. Take the time to get to know the people that God has called you to lead and serve. Now, in looking through the conference journal, I found that Thedford Center UMC has had 11 pastors since 1969. Our present pastor has been there the longest. She is starting her 11th year. Now three pastors have served seven years, two pastors served five years, one served four years, one served three, one served two, one served one, and one served one half year. Two of those 11 pastors in the last 50 years are no longer clergy. One pastor had major health issues and was out of the pulpit on medical leave. One pastor had serious financial concerns and ran up large phone bills for the church. One pastor had a physical appearance and cleanliness problems. Now, the congregation has had to look to their leaders, their laity, and their churches to carry on. Pastors come and go and most of the congregation stays. Now I know that pastors have a huge responsibility and have lots of education, knowledge, and training, but the old saying is true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So relationships, relationships are so important. First of all, our relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is your primary objective, the first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Stay close to God. Keep your Sabbath time. Find time to relax and unwind, refresh, replenish your spirit. Spend time in reading the scripture and in prayer, communing with God. And a second commandment is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. I would urge you to try to connect with the members of your congregation individually or at least, at least maybe by families. Actually, a phone call doesn't have to take long and can begin a good relationship. Just a, how are you doing? How can I pray for you? Ask about their families, their situation. Get to know them a bit. Not pushy, not interrogating, just friendly getting to know them so that they're more than just a face in the pew. If you offer this outreach, this connection, I believe you will be greatly rewarded in building good relationships. I'd also urge you to be a servant leader. At the District Committee on Ordained Ministry, local pastors were asked, how do you model servant leadership? I'd like to read a few verses on servant leadership from Matthew 20, beginning with verse 20. It was about that time that the mother of the Zebedee brothers came with her two sons and knelt before Jesus with a request. What do you want? Jesus asked. She said, give your word that these two sons of mine will be awarded the highest places of honor in your kingdom one at your right hand and one at your left hand. And skipping down to verse 24. When the ten others heard about this, they lost their tempers, thoroughly disgusted with the two brothers. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, You've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. 
Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. Now, as I was saying, we've had many pastors in the almost 50 years that I've attended Thedford Center. Each pastor had his or her preferred way of doing things. For instance, in the way they serve communion. Now that is before COVID. One wanted to cut, cut up bread and individual cups for juice to be passed out to the congregation on trays. One wanted intinction and let each person break off the bread. Another pastor wanted intinction and wanted to break off the bread herself to give to each person. One insisted that the communion table be on the main floor. One pastor served each time differently. Even one time we had grapes and goldfish crackers. Some pastors that we had liked high church, lots of liturgy. Some liked it more relaxed. Some allowed Santa Claus in the church and others did not. Some had Christmas songs beginning in Advent. Some offered Christmas carols only after Christmas Day. Some allowed an Easter egg hunt, others not. Some pastors used lay people to participate in Sunday morning worship, others only for very limited portions. Now, none of these are problems unless the pastor thinks and requires that his or her way is the only way to serve communion, the only way to handle Santa Claus. Easter egg hunt, and then makes a big issue of it. You see, most congregations have had several pastors over the years. So if you say this is the only way to do something, that might be very different from the previous pastor's thoughts on his or her only way to do something. Please don't keep reminding the congregation that the Book of Discipline says, or I have the final authority. What I say goes. You're not doing it right. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. Folks, this attitude doesn't really help anyone, and it can cause hard feelings. So learn to pick your battles. Preach the word of God. Don't get caught up on the color to paint the walls of the sanctuary. Instead, adopt an attitude of, let's work together and see how best to approach this. Give it some time. Don't rush into making judgments. Remember, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word turns up anger. And another from Proverbs says, The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. So listen, listen. To take some information with a grain of salt, each parishioner may have a different point of view as to how things went on before you, the new pastor, arrived. I would urge you, make changes slowly, prayerfully. Don't be overly critical of how things are done. Learn to pick your battles. However, never back down from preaching the Word of God. Develop leaders. You cannot do it all yourself. Talk to the membership person. Who are the regular attenders? Talk to the financial secretary. Who are the regular givers, tithers? Find out who is in Bible study, Sunday school class. Seek out those who are in a prayer group. And then use these people. Use their gifts and graces to support the ministry of the church, God's holy church. Stay positive. Your attitude will wear off, rub off on others. I'd urge you to find someone in the congregation who is supportive, positive, but also someone from whom you will accept constructive criticism, a kind word person. Please don't automatically react to criticism. Take time to pray about it. See if there is some truth in it, something maybe that you really should look at or examine. examine. Be humble. Count your blessings. Many years ago, when I talked with the Reverend Dr. Andrew Ali about a conflict, he told me to speak the truth in love and that I should care front, not confront people. 
Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things from Philippians 4.8. I'd like to share just a little song that my mom used to sing. I'm going to think on the good things. Think of what the Lord has done for me. I'm going to think on the good things. What I think is what I'm going to be. So to wrap up, I encourage you, listen, listen. Take time to build relationships and make changes slowly. Develop leaders. Be humble. Be a servant leader. Stay positive and count your blessings. Learn to pick your battles. Folks, if you can only see problems, that's what your congregation will see. But if you can see possibilities, that's what your congregation will see. Preach the good news. Preach about our wonderful, awesome God who sent his only begotten son as a baby. Don't get caught up on when you'll sing Christmas carols or if you'll allow Santa Claus in the church. Preach about this baby Jesus who gave his life on the cross, dying for our sins. Don't get caught up on whether or not you'll allow an Easter egg hunt. Preach about God sending the Holy Spirit to abide with us and dwell in us. Don't argue about the color of the new church carpet. Preach and live out the joy of our salvation. Preach and live the hope and promise and eternal life in Christ. Preach and live the love of God. Preach and live out loving our neighbor. Don't get caught in the minutia of the life of the church. Preach the good news of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection. Preach love. And may God richly bless you in your relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and in your relationship with your congregation. I thank you for taking the time to listen.